When we look at a map of the world, we can see that the vast majority of tropical rainforests are located either side of the equator. To the south, most tropical rainforests fall within this point marked on the map. And to the north, most tropical rainforests fall within this band to be marked on the map. This narrow area, either side of the equator, is contained within the tropics, being south of the Tropic of Cancer and north of the Tropic of Capricorn. At the equator, we receive the most solar insulation because of the curvature of the Earth. This means that per square metre, the equator receives the greatest amount of solar radiation. Because it is warm at the equator, it causes the ground to heat up. As the ground heats up, it warms the air above it. As the air warms, it becomes less dense and it starts to rise. The air will continue to rise until it starts to cool because of the altitude, at which point it will start to fall. This will happen in both the north of the equator and it will happen at the south of the equator. We call this the Hadley cells. Where we have air rising, or our rising limb of the Hadley cells, we get low pressure, because the air is not pushing on the ground, but instead is rising. Where the air of the Hadley cell is falling, or the falling limb, we get high pressure. And this is located at the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. Low pressure areas see air rising. As the air warms, it rises, where it eventually starts to cool. As it cools, the water vapour contained within the air starts to condense and clouds are formed. Where we get clouds, rain follows. And throughout the narrow zone where we find tropical rainforests, we get significant amounts of precipitation in the form of rain. The two factors of the heat caused by the equator being located at zero degrees latitude and the resulting high levels of solar insulation and the rising limb of the Hadley cells that brings about low pressure, the tropical rainforest's climate can be described as hot and wet.